So here we go. Uh, welcome back, everybody. Uh, Scott Tuego is here from the Ottawa uh, Extrication Team. How are you? Very good. Very good. 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 We've uh, placed Jeff Hopper in a vehicle. Yes. Yes. Yeah, and we're going to extricate him. Yes, we in are. In short order. Now, this is something. How often does this take place, uh, Scott? Well, you know what? It's one of those things that comes in cycles. Yeah. Uh, you can have a lot of car accidents in a particular day, especially you get slippy weather conditions, that kind of thing. So. You know, it can happen uh, pretty regularly. Yeah, you know. doesn't matter the season. Really. Doesn't matter the season. It can no. be a bright, beautiful, sunny day. How many people are involved on this extrication team? We have seven members on the team. Yeah. Uh, six highly trained. Highly trained. Yeah, we get lots. We've got lots of experience. So yeah, we do uh, do this quite regularly. Okay. So we place Jeff in the vehicle, and we're yep. going to simulate an extrication. We're going to simulate are, an extrication. Are we all set to go? We are pretty much set to go. You all set to go there, guys? You guys ready? Jeff, are you ready? Jeff's ready. He's ready. Okay. okay. Go, guys. You're good to go. And away they go. So this is when they arrive on the scene, Scott? Yes, it is. This is, is. what they're doing is they're doing a, uh, a scene survey to make sure that the scene is safe. Um, they have to make sure that there's no hazards, uh, like there could be uh, wires down, there could be a uh, gap. Maybe the guy was getting a gas can. Uh, he's right. got it full of fuel. He was getting it for his lawnmower. Right. So we, they're looking for uh, any kind of hazards. Now they're putting some, uh, we call it cribbing, which is essentially wood underneath the vehicle. And this is to make sure it doesn't move while we're doing the execution. Gotcha. Uh, this is a very important thing because, so, you know, the person's been injured. They're hurt. And we want to make sure they're staying safe. Stability is key. Stability is key. So what we're doing is we've got two firefighters right now. And if the uh, Ottawa, if the paramedic service is not there yet, they will provide first aid care to the uh, patient. So um, this you're working together with paramedics, right? Yes, we are. We actually know what all the services do. You see, we have the, uh, we've got, of course, police, fire, and the paramedic service. Right. So we got the police officers. They play a critical role. They're securing the scene. They're making sure that we're protected from a traffic point of view. Right. And you know what? They're there from an investigative point of view in case it's a serious accident. Gotcha. The paramedic service, again, they're pro they're, that's their very important role. They are trying to take care of the patient. They're, they're in charge of patient care, but in the absence, if they're not there yet, because lots of times we will be there uh, first, we will provide first aid treatment gotcha. to the patient uh, so that they're well looked after. So you've already got a guy inside talking to the, the victim of the crash. Yes, we do, and he's inside, and, and his job, he's there to, you know, to start providing care. He's, he's trying to make the uh, patient feel comfortable, uh, and he's now he's starting to try and get an assessment of all of his potential injuries. Yeah. So he could have, you know, if it was a T-bone crash, he's looking for breaks, fractures, getting a read on his uh, pulse, uh, if he can, maybe a blood pressure, and just there to really, you know, take care of the patient, look after that patient. Look at the uh, heavy equipment. Is that the Jaws of Life? Is it commonly known there? That is the Jaws of Life. Yes, it is. They are an exceptionally powerful tool. Uh, that is one of the key things with these tools. They're very, very powerful. Uh, they do a fantastic job. And they are just, and now what we're doing is one of our members is moving in with a, a device called the cutters. Yeah. They are exceptionally powerful. Again, they will cut through uh, steel. Uh, they will cut through pretty much any part of the car. And so they are now opening up the door creating space so that we can now get access to uh, to Jeff right. that we can start working to get him out. Exactly. Now there are two people in the in the car with him yes. looking after whatever needs to be looked after and keeping yes. him stable, right? Yes, exactly. They're just taking care of him. And I, I notice, uh, and it's very cool, how you protect uh, the patient and the people inside the car from any breaking glass or whatever, you're always concerned about that. We are very, you know what, we are concerned about everyone's safety. One of the, one of our primary roles when we are on scene is we are, to, we are looking after the patient, of course, because we're there for the patient. The whole point of this, we are there for the patient, we're there to look after the patient, we're here to serve the public. So, but we want to protect our firefighters and protect them. These tools are powerful. There's debris that can be flying. So we call that hard protection. Right. And that board will protect them from any debris that may, uh, that would potentially strike Jeff or yeah. one of our firefighters. Yeah, listen, there's all kinds of broken glass in these situations. Yes. There could be jagged edges of metal. Who oh, knows, right? It is. And, and that's why you see us wearing all of this protective equipment. You know, we're all wearing our uh, uh, PPE, we call it, personal right. protective equipment. And that's what it's for. we got a lot of... You know, sharp edges, uh, like you say, glass, that kind of thing. Right. And that's why we're uh, wearing all this stuff. You're also uh, kind of in a catch-22 because obviously time in these situations is of the essence. Yes, although it is. Although you don't want to rush. No, no. You see, that's the thing. That is a key thing that what we're trying to do is we want to do it fast, we want to do it efficient, but we want to do it safe. So it's, it's like a very 
uh, controlled process. Like it may look kind of wild and crazy, but this is a very controlled, calculated process. Yeah. Every step is calculated and choreographed yeah. so that it is safe for the patient. Yeah, and we're doing this for, for television purposes, but in effect, this is actual training it's, you know, that you're doing right now. Yes. And practice and you, makes perfect. Practice makes perfect. And the key thing, the, the reason why we're here today is we're here to promote a competition that the Ottawa Fire Service is yeah. hosting uh, September 10th at the Car Fairgrounds. And we're actually, there's uh, nine teams coming uh, that they're from all over Eastern Ontario. Three teams are actually from Nova Scotia. Oh, good. So they're coming here, and what they're here to do is to get better. And by talking to other fire departments, by watching other fire departments, you get better. You know, we've been competing for six years as a team. We've competed internationally. We've yeah. competed in Europe. We've competed all over North America. So we're meeting Australians, Germans, British. We're all over the place, and we all do things a little different. Yeah. And what the goal of the team is to go around and learn different things from different departments around the world. So then we can come home to Ottawa, and we can show our own crews, our own department. Yeah. But you know what? It goes two ways. There's things that we do in Ottawa very well, and they're watching us. Yeah. You know, they're paying attention to what we're doing too. Yeah. So it's a learning experience, and it's a shared learning experience. It's very cool. Yes. Is that, you know, and when's the competition? Just so we know, so people can go and watch. It's it. September 10th at the Carp Fairgrounds. It starts yeah. at 8 a.m. in the morning. It will run all day. There is no admission. Anyone can just come and watch. Uh, it's pretty it's cool to watch. It's very cool. You know what? It's it is an awesome thing to watch. It's an awesome thing to be involved with. Uh, we have lots of kids. Uh, when we go to these events, there's kids, there's families, because this is a cool thing for kids to see. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's a cool thing for, for guys to see, and they love it. You know, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. So what the guys are doing now, they're removing the roof of the vehicle. They made an enormous hole on the other side right. called a B-post rip. Right. And now what we're doing is we're taking the roof, gotcha. and that roof is going to get lifted right off the vehicle. Yeah. And then we're going to be able to take Jeff right out the back of here. This is uh, about seven minutes in now. Yep. Okay. So uh, things are moving along pretty nicely. They are is, moving along pretty nicely. And I guess the time uh, that it takes, Scott, depends on the situation. Right? It does. You know what? Because every single event is, uh, every single circumstance, every single accident, it's all different. You know, we never know. Uh, what we're going to get. The vehicle could be upside down. Oh, there goes the roof. Yeah, there, there. we're working on the roof now. We're going to open up the roof. This make provides the roof. access to the patient, to the victim of the crash. We've got one minute to go. Well, about a minute there. So, yeah, we're going to take the page. Yeah, we're going to take that roof off. Off comes the roof. Jeff's doing a good job Jeff's as a patient. Jeff's doing a great job yeah. as a patient. He's yeah, sitting well. this. We can go see how Jeff's doing. Okay. All right, Huntley. Let's go. So there we go, we got Jeff. They've the already guys. got him in a yeah, neck brace. Yep. They're already looking after him. Here comes the backboard. That's right. They're, so they're moving in with the backboard. And this is to now help uh, get him out of the vehicle. So we've made lots of room. We've got the doors open. We've got the roof off. So we've got lots of room to get him out of this vehicle and to uh, get him to uh, into the hands of the paramedics so that we can then transport him to the hospital exactly. and take care of him there. Wow. The key thing is with accidents, it's the golden hour. You know, the it's a proven fact that the quicker we can get someone to a hospital, the better their chances are survival. It just yeah. goes without saying. Yeah, exactly. So that is why we practice. That's why we work hard. And the point of these events is so that this goes fast and efficient, so we can get them in the hands of a surgeon in a hospital where they can do their job. Wow. That is awesome. So September 10th, Scott, is when we should come see this. September 10th. September 10th at 8 a.m., no charge. It's free. There's going to the be fair. fire trucks, and this is the kind of thing you can expect. Well, I'll tell you what, it's the only time I want to see it when you guys are practicing you know, and, and in competition. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I totally understand. That is beautiful. Great job. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for coming to see us. I and, really appreciate and, uh, it. I Thank you. You guys do well in the competition coming up in September. Thank but you so much. What a great thing for people to experience to go see it at the car fair. Yeah, it is. It yeah. is. It's going to be a great day. And then yeah. Jeff is now out. He's safe and secure. Well, that's the last time I lent him my car, I'll tell you that. I tell you, yeah. yeah. Well, it was a nice car. Great it wasn't job, bad. you guys. Great job. All right, good work, boys. Well, uh, extrication team doing some great work here on A Morning. That's fantastic. Go see them at the car fair September 10th. Hello, boy, Jeff. Yeah. All right. All right. Cool. We'll be All back right. after this. Very good.